Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, you're now listening to The Blueprint. I'm your host, A. Rich, Akeem Richens, and if you don't know how my saying goes by now, if you don't know me, get to know me. EP7 of The Blueprint, I got my brother from another mother in the building, Dave Myers. What's going on, bro? Hey, what's going on, man? Finally, back at it. Seven episodes in, I'm, I'm on it. I'm hey. on your, your podcast, hey. I'm here. Hey, definitely, seven episodes in, you're, you're the first one, deservedly so, it should be, your, your name is on it, you did an excellent job with the Blueprint Podcast graphics, and I definitely have to commend you, and you definitely deserve to have your name on it, doesn't matter how much shows you do, but let's get right into it. Buffalo Bills, Shady McCoy, he's entering his last year, his contract, we know last year Shady McCoy had a down year, only 514 yards on 161 attempts and three TDs. A lot of people say Shady's slowing down. You have some people saying that the offensive line is the reasons for Shady's regressions. How do you feel about Shady McCoy? Is he done? Does he have some juice left in the tank? And do you believe that this is ultimately Shady McCoy's last year in a Buffalo Bills uniform? Um, I think... I'll, I'll go the first part of that first. Do I think Shady is done? No, I don't. I don't think Shady's done. I think last season there was a lot of stuff that was contributing to his production. You know, you start right. in the off, yeah, you start in the off season. You know, he had the whole domestic violence thing happening. You got to think that everybody was asking about it all season long. You know, the NFL was probing into it. You know, I'm sure Sean McDermott, and Brandon Bean were asking about it. So, so that happened. So then he got past that. And then we just had the, the piss poor, you know, play from the offensive line because we didn't have the money last offseason to go out and get top notch free agents. We couldn't go get a Mitch Morris. We couldn't draft a Cody Ford. You know, right. We didn't have, you know, everything. You know, Brandon Bean didn't have, you know, the arsenal of money and, mm. and draft picks that he had that he had this season. So, or this offseason. So I, I think that Shady is going to have a bounce back here. You know, the Bills. Obviously, the scouting department, the pro scouting department, did their job in making sure that he was prepared, he's in shape. Um, they obviously don't think he's done. Uh, Brandon Bean obviously doesn't think that he's done. Um, but as far as being the last season uh, with the Bills, that's hard to say, man. I guess it all depends on his production this year. You know, if he doesn't have a good season, then obviously, yeah, he's probably, they're probably going to wash their hands and <clears throat> they're probably going to say, you know what, you know, you know, good luck to you moving on. But I think if he does have a good season, why wouldn't you bring him back? He can mentor a Devin Singletary. You know, if, if T.J. Yeldon makes the team and is productive, he can mentor mm. a young T.J. Yeldon. So, Interesting. You know, going, you know, going forward, I, I do think that he'll have a, bo- a bounce back year. I am not sure if he's going to be back next season. You know, he's pushing 32 next season. So it'll be real interesting. What What do you think? you think he's coming back or you think he's he's heading off into the pasture? Or hey. Is he done? What's your thoughts? Hey, Shady McCoy, I love Shady. He's been one of my favorite players ever since he's came in the league, ever since college. He came from the Pittsburgh Panthers. I always enjoyed the play of Shady McCoy. I personally think that this is his last year with the Buffalo Bills. If he has a good season or or, or not, or a terrible season, I believe he's going to be in his in his final season in a, in a Bills, Bills uniform. Uh, we have depth. We have depth, so I'm not sure how much yards Shady's going to get. It's going to be, Shady's career is going to be dependent on how he looks. I believe Shady's playing in his last year with Buffalo, but it's going to be up to Shady and his performance this year if Shady continues his NFL career and if he's getting picked up by another team and another team want to take a chance on him. I think it all depends on how he performs this year. But I, I definitely think this is his last year in a, in a Buffalo Bills uniform. And... I'm a piggy bank off of that a little bit. Before I get into coaches and before I get into Brian Dable and Ken Dorsey, looking at how our team is currently constructed in, in 2019, I know we haven't had training camp yet. I know we haven't even played a damn snap in the 2019 NFL season. But based on how the team looks in 2019, how would you attack the offseason? Let's get your early outlook. How would you attack the 2020 offseason in terms of what positions you think we need to build upon based on what you see this year? Well, I mean, you're going to have to go, you know, how, how are these guys going to perform? You know, is Lorenzo Alexander going to come back? If not, mm. you're going to need another linebacker. 
Right. Um, Trey is going to be going into his fourth year. Are they going to give him the fifth year option? Deion Dawkins is going to be going into his fourth year. Are you going to give him the fifth year option? Uh, you know, are you going to have to replace LaShawn McCoy in the draft? Right. You know, are these two, you know, are, they, are all these wide receivers, you know, most notably John Brown and Cole Beasley, they've got longer contracts than Robert Foster and Zay Jones. So are you going to be looking for a wide receiver? So I think. It's all based off of how everything ticks and everything progresses going through the season. Um, because at some point, you, you have to address the running back position. You got 36 year old Frank Gore, you got 31 year old LaShawn McCoy, mm. TJ Yeldon's on contract till 2020, Devin Singletary's on his rookie deal, and I don't think they drafted him to be the future. I think he's, you know, he's a serviceable back, but I don't think he's the future. Um, how is this defense going to, you know, are we going to have to go after a defensive end in the first round because, you know, Shaq Lawson's probably done. You know, did Trent Murphy pan out? So I think there's a lot of there's a lot of things that have to take place for us to actually speculate, you know, what do we need to get going into the next season. If it's me, personally, I think defensive end is mm. going to be the key in the offseason, in right. the draft. I think we go, we go first round, I think it's defensive end at this point. So what you, do you, think? you think Shaq Lawson's done? You think Shaq Lawson's done? I think, I think he's done with the Bills because, I, I, I mean, the writing's kind of on the wall because why wouldn't you give him a fifth-year option? If you were that high on him and you thought that, you know, all right, last year he showed promise, the second half of the season he, he showed some promise, but did he turn into what he was drafted as? You know, he was drafted as a first-round draft pick, and he – has been injury prone. He was injury prone coming out of Clemson because we all know how Clemson players are. But that's right. another story. Um, <laughs> you know, he hasn't. He. Ha- I know how you feel about Clemson players. Man. Right, man. Hey, um, man. Defensive players, especially, man. Especially. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just don't think that they they passed over his fifth year option with plans to just say, okay, wow, you're going to have an amazing. I just can't see him making that huge jump to where they're going to give him a multi year deal. I don't see him making a jump, you know, from the sacks he had last year, the pressures he didn't have last year, you know, things like that. I don't see them making a big jump or him making a big jump to where they're, they're just going to want to sign him to a multi-year deal. I just, right. I just don't think it's happening. And then, you know, Trent Murphy, you know, how is he going to perform this season? Is he going to stay healthy? You know, right. is, are we going to bring him back for his third year? His contract's pretty big, but there's an out clause. So draft a defensive end. Groom him in Sean McDermott's defensive system and, and move forward. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely, I definitely can agree with what you're saying. I love the assessment on Shaq Lawson. I believe he's playing in his final year as well. He's not bad. He's not horrible. He's just not who I thought we was getting when we drafted a guy 19th, 20th overall. I thought I was getting a guy that's going to be uh, a terror to opposing to opposing offenses and QBs, and and he is not that. He's turned into a uh, a, a stout run defender that that doesn't provide any pressure or pass rushing presence. So uh, I'm not I'm not opposed of of the assessment of Shaq Lawson being his final year as as the Buffalo Bills defensive end. He's not a Brandon Beaton guy in the first place. He's not a he's not a, a Sean McDermott guy in the first place. He's he's a he's a holdover. He's a hand me down so to speak. So I yeah. definitely could see that being his last year, and I can definitely see. How it all depends on how Trent Murphy performs and his being his last year with the Bills. He had a three year contract he signed, but we know we all know Brandon Bean loves his out clauses. He always uh, 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 constructs contracts where he can have an out clause after the first or second year. And since we're talking on Brandon Bean, and since I'm bringing Brandon Bean up, let's let's kind of revert over to the to the general manager. Uh, the organizational side of things. Brandon Bean, your your assessment on Brandon Bean. We have seen what we we he's done his his last two years. He's had some hits. He has some good things going on. Go on and with with the money and how he construct contracts and his draft picks and the draft capital he he provided to our organization. And he's also had some misses. He he missed on uh, Anquan Bolden. He missed on Vontae Davis. He re-signed Eric Wood and Eric Wood having to retire. He traded a third-round pick for Kelvin Benjamin. <laughs> I mean, so the man had some misses. Give me your assessment on Brandon Bean, uh, his two years with the Buffalo Bills. I think for someone who's in their first their first stint as a general manager, I think 
I, I don't want to grade like an A, B, C. Like, I don't want to do it like that. I think we're still kind of waiting because, you know, they got rid of players like Sammy Watkins and Ronald Darby, and they didn't re-sign Robert Woods, which, you know, looking at that now, hindsight, like, that would have been a big re-signing to get him back. But mm. I think I, – I just think that he did a lot of – he did a lot of good. You know, I mean, he traded away players so we can get draft capital. We ultimately got, you know, Josh Allen, who we hope and pray that is the future of this team as, at quarterback. You know, he got Tremaine Edmonds. You know, he's put a lot of nice pieces in place. He's had – I think he said, you know, this last draft was solid. I think last year's draft was solid. But, like you said, there was the whole <clears throat> handling of some stuff that happened this offseason, too, with the Ziggy Onsa thing, where he came out publicly and said, look, no. he's not going to Seattle. That's not guaranteed. And then the next day, twenty less than 24 hours later, he signed <laughs> with Seattle. Right. You know, I don't know what happened with Antonio Brown. I don't know if that was just smoke and bullshit, or mm-hmm. if Brandon Bean just was made a fool, or if there was not serious talks that were really happening. <clears throat> but I think... I think after this season, I think we can get a full assessment of Sean McDermott, and I think we get a full assessment of Brandon Bean. Three full seasons, you know, they've they've gotten their players in here. Right. They've gotten their their schemes in here. Sean McDermott's on his second go round on a bunch of these coaches. So I think this year, if if this team, you know, is five hundred or below, I think then we start making different, you know, analysis and assumptions on the future of this team. But, like, I, I just, I don't know, man. I'm, there's some things, like like you mentioned Anquan Bolden and, and Kelvin Benjamin and stuff right. like that. Right, um, Vontae Davis, you know, the Eric Wood signing. Exactly. And then you look at stuff that he's done that's good, you know, like, yeah, we were all pissed that he traded Marcel Darius because he, we lost all that. We had all that dead cap. But now look at, he was able to turn that dead cap, you know, the season before. Now this offseason we had a bunch of money to spend to fix the offensive line and to bring in wide receivers and tight ends and stuff like that. So I just think it's a wait and see at this point. I, I, I If I had to grade him, I'd grade him probably at a B, I guess, if we're going to grade. Right. But I, st- I still think we're kind of waiting and seeing. This season is the season. It's the season. This it, season this is, is definitely the season. This is the season that everybody pointed to on the calendar when he made all those damn trades and we got Josh Allen. It was like, all right, 2019. It's got to be the season that this team starts to trend highly in the upward direction, or you know we may be in trouble. But right, I don't, I don't know what what do you th- what do you think what how do you how do you feel he's he's handled himself for the first two years being a first time general manager. I think he's he's handled himself like a human being. <laughs> a human being right. a human being tries to be a, a good model citizen, but on the, a, along the way. A good model citizen makes mistakes, and and that's what Brandon Bean has done along the way. I think he's done a good job, but he's not perfect. He makes mistakes. He reminds me of a of a of a person that's he's trying to go to church every day. He's trying to go to church every Sunday, but you know he still has some Saturdays where he's in the club. <laughs> he still has some Saturdays where he has to he has to be out there sinning a little bit. And I think that's where Brandon Bean <laughs> is at right now. He's did a good job, in my opinion. I believe he's did a good job with how he's uh, constructed contracts. I believe he's did a good job taking us out of taking us out of debt, so to speak. We have a lot of cap flexibility. Uh, he he's shown a lot of brash and a lot of uh, bravado. He's been very brave and and bold with some of his trade tactics. And we had to suffer a little bit, but we could see the light at the end of the tunnel because of some moves he made. And then he has some negativity that what I spoke on um, not too long ago with Anquan Bolden and Bonte Davis. So he's he's a he's a good human being that made mistakes along the way, and that's how I have to assess Brandon Bean. Uh, 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 right now, we'll see what happens in this in this critical season. I believe now we've we've had a we had a season this year we where we can properly evaluate every position and every coach at their position. So we're going to definitely see what happens in this 2019 season. And while I was talking about the coaches, you notice with Sean McDermott in in the in the beginning of the Sean McDermott era, we've had older more experienced coaches 
in uh, David Culley and our wide receivers coach and our special teams coach uh, that we had before he got let go. And now we've had some turnover and now we have some younger guys in coming in and Ken Dorsey and the younger guys coming in and our wide receiver coach and Chad Hall and our special teams coach as well. What do you think about the about the the transition from experienced assistant coaches to now rookie coaches? Do you think Sean McDermott is ready for that? Do you think he's built and, and ready to have guys that's first time on their jobs? How do you feel about that? I, I think that so Whenever you start like a new job, I'll kind of like summarize it this way. Whenever you start a new job, I think that you try to bring in some guys that you're comfortable with. Right. So he brought in guys with experience to kind of help him, you know, figure things out. You know, like the Terry Rubiskis and the Dave Cullies, you know, and the Rick Dennisons, the guys that are have been around the league for a while. May not be in coordinator positions, but they've been around the league long enough, you know, that they have routines. And we all know that McDermott's a routine-driven guy, and he's he preaches that every, every day going forward. But now, I think he finally realized, being a younger head coach, you need to get some younger assistant coaches um, and coordinators in here so that they can relate to these guys. Because it's a different generation now. Right. As we all know about the millennial age and all that shit. It's, it's different now. You know, you get a Ken Dorsey who's <clears throat> not too far, he's not too far removed from playing. You know, he... Right. And I don't, I don't think a lot of the Ken Dorsey and Cam Newton stuff um, really was that big a deal like everybody makes it out to be because, you know, he came from Carolina. I think that he saw Ken Dorsey, a guy who interviewed for the offensive coordinator position last year, just somebody who's younger, who's fresher, who's extremely smart. Um, you know, you, you look at the, the special teams coach, and he's, he's farewell. He played not yes. too long ago. And he played on special teams. You know, you got Ken Dorsey, who he was a quarterback. You Mm. don't have a David Culley, who was a wide receiver coach that was now the quarterback's coach. Like, that shit Mm. made no sense, but it was was safe. Right. So, I just think that now, you you know, you you got guys in here that are are younger. Yes, they may be inexperienced, but you have to gain experience somehow, right? You got to be thrown into the fire to learn, you know, how to perform at any given job. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's a plus. You know, I think it's a plus. I've talked about Ken Dorsey <laughs> numerous times, you know, on, on different platforms. I just I think it's a plus with not just Ken Dorsey. Um, you know, Bobby Johnson was successful with the Colts. They brought him in to be the offensive line coach. I think yes, you can go down about the Bobby. They're, they're, yeah, they're they're all young guys. So I mean how how do you feel? You think it'll mesh well? You think that he's setting himself up for failure? You think he's good what do you think hey i like it i like I, at first I, I thought that um sean mcdermott was was was, was scaring me a little bit i was a little concerned when he first got hired he he got a lot of uh, older guys a lot of a lot of guys with a lot of experience and i seen that he seen that experience as, as vital and i seen it as vital yes but i was worried about some guys because when you reach a certain age and when you've been coaching for a certain amount of years, you want to know if if you're still relatable. You want to know if you're still if you're still modern. And with some of the guys we got, I was concerned that if we would still be able to play a a, a modern brand of football because we have all these older guys. And now that we have these younger guys coming in, he Farrell, and we have younger guys class coming in in Chad Hall, and we bringing in the guy. That in, in Ken Dorsey, that's one of the most winning college quarterbacks in the league with the Miami Hurricanes going 38 uh, and 2 overall, the 2013 Hall of Fame induction guy. We bring in a lot of guys that's now relatable and, and, and can understand exactly what our modern, what our football players, what our current roster and our current players is actually going through today. So I think because of the relatable approach that a lot of the guys, a lot of our assist- assistants have to the game, I think is going to is gonna, um, resonate well on on the football field and, and in the locker room. So I think it's, I like the transition. I really do. <clears throat> and I think, too, if, if you've watched anything about, like, uh, OTAs and training camp and stuff, last couple seasons, you'd see, like, a David Culley and a Terry Rubisky be standing, you know, a ways away with a clipboard. Right. Well, you know what? The NFL game is fast as shit now, 
And if you're watching anything you've seen this year from this offseason with the training camp and stuff, like Chad Hall is running routes with the wide receivers. Yes. You know, Ken Dorsey is Ken Dorsey is two feet away from Josh Allen, watching his his motions, watching his footwork. So there's definitely I think it's more than just being relatable. I think it's getting guys that have the determination to actually prove themselves. Where Terry Rubisky's been around forever. David Culley's been around forever. Rick Dennison was around forever. So those guys were, you know, they're used to their old ways. And these new guys are coming trying to prove themselves. So I think it's a breath of fresh air just to kind of see that they're hands-on. Like, they're hands-on and they, they want to prove their knowledge and they want to yes. use what they've earned, you know what I mean, to, to try to get these guys to be successful. Not to mention that I think Sean McDermott has created this culture that's just like infectious to everybody that he brings in. Right. And I think it's real. No, I don't think it's bullshit. I don't think it's a catchphrase. I think that the culture is real. And Agreed. It's, it's just a breath. It's a breath of fresh air. Like it's. I don't want to sound corny and cliche, but it's. It feels like it's a family atmosphere, and it feels like they're they're here to try to prove. Okay, everybody has been talking shit about us for for twenty goddamn years, even though we weren't on the team, and we're here to turn this shit around, and, and we mean business. So. That's, that's my two cents on that. Definitely, man. I think the culture is definitely important. I definitely do think he changed the culture within our organization. Uh, we have a lot of good guys on the team. We just have a lot of, of good guys. Sha- from even Shaq Lawson. We was concerned with Shaq Lawson in his rookie year where he go out and party to party a lot. He's paying for a funeral for an 11-year-old girl. Shaq Lawson has been doing a lot of good things. Zay Jones has been uh, visiting kids in the hospital. We have... A lot of good guys, and that's a testament to the culture Brandon Bean and, and, and Sean McDermott was talking about. But before we get out of here, man, before we get out of here, I got one, possibly two more questions for you. First question is, first question is, you're starting an uh, offensive lineman. What five offensive linemen are you running out there on opening day, your opinion? Uh, all right, we'll go left to right. Left tackle, Deion Dawkins. Uh, left guard, um... Quentin Spain, center, obviously, Mitch Morse. Right guard, I'm kind of torn on right guard and right tackle. Yes. Um, I'm, I've, been going, I've been going back and forth. I think, for some reason, I feel like Spencer Long is going to start at right guard. I don't know why. I just think that he's got some determination. He was the first guy, one of the first guys we signed way back when in, in free agency, and I think Cody Ford's going to start at right tackle. At some point, though, I feel like Ty Insecki is going to make his name known somewhere. If Cody Ford struggles, we throw him in at right tackle. If, you know, if Deion's having problems, we throw him in at left tackle. But I got I got Dawkins, Spain, Morse, Long, and Ford. What about you? What do you got? Hey, man, I like it. I like it. I, I have that I have that, uh, that same five. That same five. Like uh, I was saying I, I was saying earlier on the live, I, part of me want to kick Ford inside to guard. And and have uh, a tight and secchi at, at tackle with Dawkins. Part of me feel like Cody Ford can be a better guard than Spencer Long. I'm worried about Spencer Long a little bit. Yeah, the Jets cut him for a reason. <laughs> we signed him to that deal and cut him for a reason. I'm hoping when I've been reading from Spencer Long, I'm hoping that uh, I hear he was battling an injury all last season. He moved from guard to center back to guard, and I'm hopefully now now that we have a healthy Spencer Long, that he can improve himself and prove that he's a he's a, a good guard in this league and, and upgrade our offensive line position but that's uh we, it, 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 to, to your point too about Spencer Long I mean we can't discredit Wyatt Teller but Spencer Long was cut by the Jets and their offensive line is, is fucking hot garbage right so that's one thing that does kind of concern me but I don't know there's something something about I, I just don't know. I, I don't. I don't know if Teller is fully ready to just be a starting guard, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't make the fifty-three. To be honest with you, but I'm in a root for the guy. Right. I, right. I think. I, I think he's. I think he's a culture guy, but I don't know, man. And I, I'm kind of rooting for Inseki too because the guy's a, a mountain of a man, and I think. You know, I was torn at, at left tackle because that's a blind side, so I, I would want that guy right there because I don't know if Dion uh, can play tackle, but he's 
mean, he's all in at playing left tackle, and, every, and it seems like the Bills brass is all in at, at keeping him at left tackle. Definitely, man. And let's, and let's not forget Joe Feliciano. We're going to see what he does as well, the acquisition from the Oakland Raiders. We're going to see what he does. And, and don't forget Waddle and Jeremiah Siles. Uh, we have a lot of guys in the offensive line position that can't battle in the offensive line front. It's going to be very, very interesting, man. Let's, we can't yeah. ignore it. But, um, but hey, man, it's, it's been fun, Dave. My, my brother from another mother, we got uh, our blueprint episode finally in, EP7. Seven is a good number. Seven is definitely a good number. This is your boy, A. Rich, Akeem Richens, DM3. You want to say something before you get out of here? No, we out, man. This was fun. We'll do it again real soon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. My brother from another mother, DM3, Dave Myers, A. Rich. Until next time. The Blueprint. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.